Okay, this is going to be your circular motion lab, and this is going to be your, your uh, explanation in the, uh, of what you're going to see and what you have to do in the theoretical background to it. Now, the apparatus that you're going to see me using, uh, I call it the spinning apparatus, is this thing here. Uh, on one end, there is a black rubber stopper, and then that is tied uh, to a string, and it goes through a little plastic tube here, which is, I call it the handle. And then on the other end, there is a paper clip, and that paper clip allows you to hang a mass on the end of it, which in the case of your lab is going to be 100 grams. Now, here is the... Here is the idea behind the lab. If this rubber stopper is not in motion at all, this mass on the other side is heavier than that, and so you can see when I just let it move, it wants to be pulled downward like that. But if I start to spin the rubber stopper, and I'm going to get down on one knee for this and turn to the side so hopefully you can see it against the whiteboard. Um, if I spin the rubber stopper round and round, I can balance the weight of this 100 gram mass. Now, if I spin it too fast, you can see that the 100 gram mass gets pulled upward. And then if I go really slow, I gotta hold this up high, you can see that the mass starts to drop because it's heavier. So the goal here is I need to balance these two things. Now I do need a marker and so I have a little binder clip that I can put on this. Uh, didn't do a good job with that one. Shoot. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is clip this on a certain part of the string and then when I spin this round and round I am going to adjust the spinning rate so that that binder clip gets right to the base of the plastic tube but then it can spin freely okay and what we're going to do is we're going to take some measurements off of this and our ultimate goal is to calculate or try and figure out what is the mass of this rubber stopper going round and round. Um, so now let's go to the whiteboard and we can talk about the theory behind what we're doing. So I'm gonna draw a picture here. This is our, actually instead of a solid line, I'll draw our object here which is the rubber stopper, and then we're gonna put the plastic tube here, all right? And we'll color code this, the, the string is kind of red. So we're gonna have the string come down through here, and then on the end of that, I'll put it in green. This is our hanging mass, which is 100 grams. Now, this object is going around in a circle and in that circle we have a radius and remember in our standard circular motion picture we have a V sub T and then we also have an F sub C and our our workhorse equations are that the centripetal acceleration equals the linear velocity divided by squared divided by the radius and then the centripetal force that keeps the object in the circle is equal to the mass of the object times the centripetal acceleration. Now I am going to be very specific and I am going to label this guy M1 and I'm going to label this one here M2. And one of the concepts that you have to be comfortable with is that gravity 
pulling down on this is what equals the centripetal force because it's connected to the string keeping the rubber stopper in the circle. So I am going to call this FW2, which we would calculate by taking the mass of object two and multiplying it by the acceleration due to gravity. And I will tell you, if we're in class, we would vary this up a little bit, but in the videos that you guys are going to see, I'm going to use a 100 gram mass, which remember equals 0 0.1 kilograms. So this M2 goes here, so that will allow you to calculate this FW2. But remember, because of this picture, our F sub C is equal to this FW2, so this number is going to go in place for FC in that particular equation. Now, our goal is to figure out what is the mass of this M1, and that is the M that is in our F sub C equals M times A sub C. So we need to be able to measure the centripetal acceleration of this thing going round and round. And that's what I'm going to explain to you now what or how we're going to do that. Now, our object is going around at a steady rate the whole time in this circle. And if we go back to our constant velocity equation, that would be V equals delta x over t. So delta x is how far did the object travel, and t is how long did it take to travel that distance. Well, in the case of an object going in a circle, it keeps going round and round and round. So when you ask, well, how far does it go? It depends how many times it's gone around. But let's say that we focus on only going around once. So we're going to call that one revolution. If our object only goes around once, that means the delta x is equal to the distance around our circle once, which is what is known as the circumference. And that means our delta x becomes equal to 2 pi r, and that is how long it, the distance it takes to go around once. Now, that means we need the time for one revolution. There is actually a specific variable in physics to cover this, and it is capital T. And capital T is known as the period of an object. So if something goes through a repetitive motion over and over and over again, the period is how long does it take to do that once? Well, in the case of our rubber stopper, it's going to be going around and around and around. So the period would be how long does it take to go around once? Now, if we can figure out how long it takes to go around once, I can measure the radius because remember, I have my little binder clip. And once I have the binder clip on the string, that allows me, let me get rid of this so it'll hang here, that allows me to measure the radius of the circle that the rubber stopper is going to be going in. Because remember, my goal is to keep the binder clip right at the base of the rubber stopper. All right? Now, if you were here, you would have to actually do that measuring. But I have some videos where I have measured specific uh, radiuses and I have done the spinning so you can do some timing. Now, if with that information and this equation, instead of this being V, this specifically now becomes V sub T. And if you can calculate this, you can put that value in here and calculate the A sub C. And then you can put that in there and you can finally figure out 
or try and determine what is this mass of the rubber stopper going round and round. Now here is where I gotta show, I, I gotta talk about what you're gonna see in the accessory videos. Uh, I am going to be spinning the, the apparatus that you've seen round and round and it's pretty challenging to measure how long it takes the rubber stopper to go around once. So instead of doing that, trying to do it once, what you're going to do is you are going to measure the time that it takes to go around 10 times. So in the videos where you're going to take your measurements, I'm going to have the spinning apparatus and I'm going to have it going and I'll hunker down here a little bit. I'm going to have it going and then I will say, okay, I think I'm dialed in. Go ahead and start timing. And you are going to need to use a stopwatch like on your phone while you're watching the video. And when you see the rubber stopper go behind my arm, because it kind of disappears for an instant, as soon as the rubber stopper disappears, you hit start and you need to count 10 revolutions. And on the 10th revolution, when it goes behind my arm, you hit stop. And when you do that, what you will have is you will have the time that it takes to go around 10 times. But what you need to remember for this equation is you only need one. So what you are going to do, I don't know where I put my, where did I put my, oh, there it is. There's my whiteboard marker. You need to time 10 revolutions and then what you need to do is divide that number by 10 and that will equal your capital T for just one revolution. And once you have that number, I will give you the radius and you can start to do these calculations to see what is the experimental mass of the rubber stopper going round and round. Now, I have actually put two videos for you to collect data from because I have done this whole process at two different radius lengths because when I adjust the radius length, I have to adjust the rate that the rubber stopper, that I spin the rubber stopper at so that these, these things will balance out. So what I would like you to do is to go through this process twice, once with each video, because if everything, if everything went well, when you do the calculation, it should be similar for both of them. Um, now, I want you to show me all the work that you have to do for these calculations on a blank piece of paper uh, and then take a picture of it and submit it to show me that you've done this. Uh, so there'll be two sets of these calculations, one for a shorter radius and one for a longer radius. So that's the theory behind how this lab works. And I've videoed the, the lab. So uh, I will leave that up to you now to, to go ahead and take care of. And uh, Good luck.